What's up YouTube? Um, so we're having a little problem with the prelude. Uh, the other day I went to go to work and I could not shift. Um, but that was with the car on. When the car was off, I could shift in a year, no problem. So here's your manual fifth gen. Granted, not all of you guys have this uh, billet shifter, but pushing the clutch in, car is off. I can shift into gear just fine. But once the car is on, I cannot shift into gear at all. And that's a good indication that your clutch master cylinder has gone bad or potentially your slave cylinder. So today we're gonna go and replace that with a new clutch master cylinder. So I went to my local auto parts store and bought a Duralast clutch master cylinder. That's what it looks like in the bag, brand new. Um, this part goes through the firewall and this is where your hose connects to to go to the reservoir. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be installing that today and where that is situated is right down in here. Now I painted mine black, uh, black when I was repainting my engine bay. Um, so it's very hard to see it, but it's down there, I promise. Uh, and then this is just a reservoir here. Now all of this connects, there's a, a steel um, hydraulic line that goes underneath of the back of the engine here. Over on top of your transmission, there's a banjo bolt set up right there where that goes down into this manifold. I don't know if you can see that. Banjo bolt just back there. Let's see if we can get in there. Yeah, see? Banjo bolt right there, and then goes into this manifold, and then this line kind of jogs up and down until it goes to your clutch slave cylinder. Now my clutch slave cylinder is not leaking, it's actuating, um, so I'm almost positive it's not that, and it's gotta be that clutch master cylinder. So, we're gonna replace it, because I'm gonna drive my prelude before I go on my honeymoon. Yes, I said honeymoon. Tomorrow, I'm literally getting married. Literally getting married tomorrow. So, let's do it. All right, so, getting to removing the clutch master cylinder. All you need is a light, so I get my headlamp on, and you're gonna need a 12 millimeter deep socket. 12 millimeter deep socket and a pair of needle nose. I got my lines for needle nose. Um, and we're gonna crawl under here. It's gonna be annoying with this headlamp probably for you guys to see, but up underneath it here is your clutch pedal. I'm gonna cut all of this out. All right, so right up here, see there's a cotter pin right in the center of the camera, right there. Um, that cotter pin has to come out and that pin that it's through needs to come out because this shaft right here needs to come off of your clutch pedal, which is this big assembly right here. And this is the pedal. Um, so we're gonna take the uh, lines and pliers and take that cotter pin out, push the pin through, and then there's a bolt here, and then there's a bolt on the back side, and that's what we need that deep socket for. We're gonna take those off, so I'm gonna do that right now. All right, now that I got all the bolts off, there were two bolts, one cotter pin, and then that center pin that you have to push out. Um, I am in the engine bay, bay again, and I am trying to show you my painted clutch master cylinder. Um, it's down there, if my phone will focus, there it goes. So it's painted black, it's a little dirty down there. I uh, apologize for that. It's been a while since the prelude has gotten a uh, bath. But um, next thing we gotta do is take that little clip right there off of this hose, um, disconnect that, and I might disconnect it up here, that way I'm not just dumping all of the um, hydraulic fluid down into this area here. Um, but then we can just pull out your master cylinder a little bit. Um, we have to take off the steel fitting down here. Um, I'm guessing I'm gonna say that might be a 10 millimeter down there um, for that hard line. So we're gonna crack that loose and then pull this whole thing out. So I'm gonna get... All right guys, well I got the old clutch master cylinder out of there, and as you can see, it is an older one. It is a Nissan, which is essentially Obler. Adler, which is the original one that they put in the cars. Um, I disconnected this uh, hard line that was right here. I left this connected that way I wouldn't um, lose as much um, fluid there. Hydraulic fluid stop three. So that way I can keep it raised up higher than the reservoir and just connect it right to the new one and then put it through the firewall. So as you can see down there, put a rag just to catch some of the fluid. There's that hard line again. And uh, now there's a hole in the firewall behind that rag. You can see a little bit of light getting through there. That's what we got. So we're gonna put this back through and we're gonna bleed the system and hopefully uh, everything will be kosher. All right guys, so as you can see, the new shiny Clutch Master uh, cylinder is installed down there. Um, I did lie, that hard line that's in the back there, that is a 12 millimeter, not a 10 millimeter. So sorry to mislead you there. Um, probably one of the most important parts about this job is to take your time trying to screw that nipple in there correctly because if you get cocked, you're gonna strip out either the nipple or you're gonna strip out your new Clutch Master cylinder, which um, if you strip that nipple out, then you're gonna have to somehow uh, either buy a new um, hydraulic line or flare a new nipple down there, which would suck because there is much space. I also decided to empty out my uh, reservoir because my uh, hydraulic fluid is a little cloudy. Um, so we're gonna put new stuff in there. Uh, we're gonna go and bolt up the back end on the other side of the firewall, put that pin through and get that together. And then we'll put some fluid in here and bleed it all out. At least the air is what I mean. All right, so crawling back under here, you have all of the hardware. You have the two nuts, that pin and the cotter pin. Now, as you can see, maybe you can't see, <laughs> um, the rod is just sticking through the firewall. See how that little tab is right there? That little tab you want to put away from you um, because that's where the 
that's just the way the orientation of the pin is held. See how one side, uh, let me do this. So that pin does not have a round head. It has two flats on either side. Those two flats fit in between those two ears. So I'm gonna see if I can put this flashlight somewhere where it's gonna stay. So as you can see under my dash here, I have the cotter pin back in, the rod installed with the pin, and um, I basically ran this jam nut up against, a, so another conversation. This rod basically can adjust your clutch throw, and it's hard to calibrate it without any fluid in there because there's no resistance. Um, so we're gonna fill that up, but this jam nut, don't forget about this jam nut. That jam nut has to be calibrated um, on based on length. What I mean is you can take that jam nut and turn it down, like back it off, and then you wanna twist that rod until you feel resistance. And then once you feel resistance against the clutch master cylinder assembly, uh, then run that jam nut back up against to the left and tighten that down. And that's gonna, you know, stiffen up your throw and give you a solid clutch feel the whole way down. So we're gonna get fill up with the reservoir. And right, guys, so for me, because I am an only one man band here, um, it's very helpful if you have two people in order to bleed your uh, clutch uh, system here, is what I'm gonna call it. But essentially there's a bleeder nipple down here at the bottom, right? And there's also a plug up at this top end, at the bottom of this, that you can drain air out of the system. Now, usually what I do is I go down to the slave cylinder, clutch slave cylinder, I take a piece of vacuum hose, and I put my wrench over top of the nipple. I'm using a 5 16th, I think the proper one is an 8 millimeter, but 5 16th still works. But I take a piece of vacuum hose and I shove it on the nipple down here at the bottom, and I take one of my old Dot 3 um, brake fluid containers, and I set it down on the ground here. I manually crank the uh, clutch pedal, either with my hand or with my foot, and uh, just continue to check my reservoir, and I just fill it up that way. So here it goes. I filled up my reservoir already, and the reason I start with my hand on the clutch pedal is because the first thing that's gonna happen is the clutch is gonna fall down to the floor. So it's just gonna wanna hit the floor because there's no fluid in there. So you want your hand to continue, to continue to bring it back and forth. You wanna do that a couple times, and then you wanna go down, check your reservoir, and if you're not an idiot like me, you already cracked your nipple open here so that fluid can go somewhere. So now it's cracked open, and I'm gonna continue to pump the pedal. So I'm gonna do this for a little bit so you guys don't have to watch. All right, so I've been continually pumping and filling up my reservoir. It took me three times, so three sessions of pumping and three fills in the reservoir. Finally, I started feeling more resistance, so I went and I cracked my um, my slave cylinder closed just a teensy bit. I had to wrench up and down, push a little bit more, um, and then I pushed it all the way down the floor and then pulled the pedal back to its uh, upright position, came out, closed this guy, this nipple is closed, topped off the reservoir, and then what you do then is you listen. So right now I have the camera wedged right by the uh, slave cylinder and I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to be listening for. You'll hear it on the camera. I'm going to go push the clutch in. So as you probably saw on camera, the clutch, uh, clutch slave cylinder was moving and it was pushing my springs in on my clutch and it was squeaking a little bit. Um, and that was the uh, noise that I was listening for. Uh, your car might not make that noise, but you're definitely going to be able to tell. You can use your phone just like I did and tell when the uh, slave cylinder is pushing out. And that is pretty much a wrap, besides the fact that now I have to go underneath and I'm going to bring that jam nut um, up against that uh, part that it connects to and run that thread, that rod, the whole way out so that I feel resistance. You want it to go towards the master clutch cylinder so it pushes against the uh, clutch pedal. That way you have the maximum amount of travel uh, pushing that clutch master cylinder um, piston out and getting that hydraulic action. But guys, I'm very sweaty. It is hot out today. Um, just want to say as a disclaimer, it looks like it takes a lot more time on camera. Um, just because I have to, you know, do this, put the camera down, you know, change my angle and do all this stuff. But literally you can change your clutch master cylinder in a matter of five minutes. It does not take that long. I think the, amount, the most amount of time you're going to spend is bleeding the system. Um, and that's probably because you're probably going to be watching this video and trying to figure out how the heck I did that by myself. But like I said, it helps if you have somebody else to do it. Um, but other than that, it is done. I'm going to go take it on a road test and, uh, we we'll see how she goes. I'm almost positive it's going to work great because the clutch pedal is nice and heavy. Um, and it was not that way before. So without further ado, uh, like and subscribe and I'm going to wipe the sweat and dirt off my body and take a rip in the prelude. So once again guys, thanks for watching. See you later.